Welcome to your favourite day of the week everyone, where today is a Viking day. We're learning what the Vikings ate. So last time out, we were exploring the harsh jungles and temples of Mexico to discover what food the Aztecs ate to survive. This time, we will travel across the Atlantic Ocean, sailing the rough and dangerous seas all the way to Northern Europe to discover the fantastic tales and find out what foods the Viking consumed. So, as it's a special Viking themed episode today, I would thought I'd mark the occasion by growing a majestic beard. However, since I haven't actually hit puberty yet, the beard growing didn't go as well as planned, so instead of looking like a fierce viking warrior, I now look like a lesbian Ragnar Lothbrok. Anyway, <laughs> on to today's video. Before we find out what the Vikings ate, we must first learn who the Vikings really were. The Vikings, also called Northmen or Norsemen, were a group of seafaring warriors who originated from Scandinavia, which is modern day Sweden, Denmark and Norway. From the 9th to 11th century, they raided and pillaged large parts of Europe by sea through their fantastic Viking longboats. They also voyaged as far as the Mediterranean, North Africa, Middle East and also North America. Their pillaging, plundering and killing earned them the name Vikinga, which in early Scandinavian language means pirate. Life in the Viking Age would have been extremely tough even for a simple life, doing day-to-day -day activities such as tending to your farm and taking care of your livestock and family. So the fact that the Viking life was a lot about seafaring, raiding and pillaging tells us that the Vikings ate extremely well if they chose to expend vast amounts of energy on these electrifying adventures. They were adept at raising food under the harshest of circumstances and were skilled hunters, foragers and even beekeepers. Most historians agree that the Vikings ate better than most peasants across the whole of Northern Europe and even sometimes better than kings or queens. A major benefit of the Viking diet is that every level of society, from kings to common farmers, ate meat every single day. Because of the geographical location of Scandinavia and the fact that Vikings were skilled fishermen means that a large percentage of their diet was made up of fish and it is thought to be roughly 25% of it and there is evidence from them eating everything out of the sea from herring to whales. Some sources suggest that the whales were driven to sea by the Norsemen in their ships and killed for a bounteous harvest for the entire settlement. However, it is much more likely that the Vikings just took advantage of the whales that washed up ashore dead or weakened. So reading about this made me curious to what whale actually tasted like, so I've done a quick Google search and found out it doesn't actually taste like fish, more like reindeer or moose, which makes sense as this a mammal, not an actual fish. And then it led me to my next problem, which was I've never actually eaten reindeer or moose, so I still don't know what whale tastes like. So I had to find out what reindeer and moose tasted like then, which is apparently very gamey and very dense. So similar to lamb. So I don't know if whale does taste similar to lamb. So if any of you have actually eaten whale, I'd love to know what whale tastes like. So leave a comment down below if you have eaten whale. We must find out. We must find out for science. Anyway, other sea creatures the Vikings enjoyed at the dinner table included oysters, mussels, shrimp, seals, walrus, and local fish such as cod, salmon, and herrings. As well as meat from fish, Viking farmers also raised a variety of livestock, including cattle, sheep, goats, pigs, chickens, and horses, which they ate and used for eggs. A lot of these animals were kept mainly for their produce like milk and eggs and are only slaughtered once they stopped producing. The milk was either used for drinking or churned into butter, which would leave a byproduct of buttermilk, which was rich and nutritious drink with a slightly sour taste. Cheeses would also be produced, as well as an item called skur, which is similar to something like a Greek yogurt, but is technically a soft cheese. It's slightly sour, but also slightly sweet and is still enjoyed in Iceland today. Certain breeds of animals which were unique to the Vikings included the Icelandic horse, the Icelandic cattle and a plethora of sheep breeds, the Danish hen and the Danish goose. Beef would have been the most common meat they ate along with mutton and pork and they only ate a small amount of horse meat so horse lovers you can breathe easy. Along with the meat the Vikings ate from the livestock they were also skilled hunters and hunted animals such as rabbits, reindeers, wild birds, and sometimes even bears, which they all ate. These hunting trips would take place roughly once per week, and every part of the animal would be used, would it be for food or various tools and supplies. Barley and rye were the grains that grew best in the northern climate, along with oats. From these grains, the Vikings made beer, bread, stews, and porridge, with bread being enjoyed of every meal, and flatbread being the daily bread of the Vikings. 
A simple dough was made from ground oats or barley. Water was added and then the dough flattened out on a griddle and baked over the fire. Cabbage, onions, garlics, leeks, turnips, peas and beans. No, that's not the recipe to a crap Christmas dinner. These would have been the vegetables sowed in the spring by the Vikings and harvested in the late summer or early fall. Wild plants and herbs have also been gathered by the women and children, which are mostly greens and including nettles, docks, cresses and lambs quarters. The fruits local to the area would have been apples, plums, pears and cherries, as well as a lot of local berries which would have been easily foraged. Hazelnuts were a favourite local tree, and another nut, the walnut, would also have been a favourite from the Vikings. However, this was not as local as the hazelnut and would have been imported from other countries and traded for. Food was often salted and enhanced with spices, some of which were imported like black pepper, while others were cultivated in herb gardens such as dill or harvested in the wild. As refrigerators and freezers weren't invented yet, the Vikings had the difficult challenge of gathering food that would last them the whole year, as in winter it would be very difficult to grow crops and raise animals. Therefore they needed another way to make sure they had enough food to survive them through these harsh winters. They were able to do this by pickling a big part of their cuisine. Fruit and vegetables were pickled which made them last up to six months. When it came to meat, a lot of the meat would be salt, dried or cured allowing the meat to be preserved as long as possible, which mean in these winters they wouldn't have to go out as often to get a lot of food. And like every person in the world, the Vikings also enjoyed a good drink. Beer was made by fermenting barley with water to produce an alcoholic drinks, and they most likely would have known about adding hops to enhance the flavour. However, the beer wouldn't have been as strong as we had today, but in some cases it might have been safer to drink than the water. The Vikings also drank a honey-like wine called mead, and the fermentation of the honey made it a lot more sugary and sweeter taste than the beer, and it also provided a lot higher alcohol percentage. If you haven't drank mead, I'd recommend you do try it. I have tried it before and it is actually really nice. It gets you very drunk if you drink the whole bottle, because it's about 13-14%, but it is really good. Highly recommend it. Highly recommend it. The Vikings also enjoyed wine. However, as grapes didn't grow in Scandinavia, it was more often imported from Germany or France as a drink for the rich instead of beer or mead. So with all this food to eat, the Vikings would have eaten at two points in the day. One called Dagmal or Day Meal, which would have been eaten one hour after waking up, and Natmau, which you can probably guess called Nightmeal, which was eaten after the day's work. For Dagmau, the adults would probably have helped themselves to some leftover stew, especially the thick layer of animal fat that would have formed on top, with some fresh bread and fruit. The children's Dagmau would have likely been a porridge, perhaps sweetened with honey and fruits. Natmau was generally a stew that had been simmering for most of the day, with whatever meat and vegetables were available. It was common for a stew, known as Scouse, or scores, I'm not sure, to be in a constant state of renewal and last several days. Each day they'd add new things to the pot to replace what had been taken the day before, and the almost constant state of cooking would help break down the tough meats and make sure there was no problems with germs. Flatbreads with honey and fruit would have provided their sweet treats at the end of the meal, and all of this would have been washed down with ale, mead and buttermilk. During the sea voyages, the Vikings would have taken a lot of food that would last a long time, such as their preserved meats and fish, and also grains, which, if stored correctly, can last a long time. And being at sea as well, if the Vikings wanted some fresh fish, they could also fish for it, if the weather allowed it. So there wraps up our summary of what food the Vikings ate, how they survived through the harsh winters and on their sea voyages. I hope you've all enjoyed today. If you do have another era in history you want to learn about relating to food or anything else, please do leave it in the comments. So I hope you have all enjoyed. If you haven't yet, please do like the video. And if you haven't yet, please do subscribe. I really do appreciate it. Anyway, I've been Jamie's Day, your favourite day of the week. And this was what food was the Vikings eat. I hope you all enjoyed. I'll see you all next time. Peace.